Welcome back to the Haas Online Training Series. In this session, we're going to take a quick overview look at the visual editor and the features within it. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now the first thing we have to do, of course, is open up the visual editor, which we can do by hovering over here on the left hand side and clicking visual editor. From here, we're going to go ahead and just make sure our markets are correct. We're going to use BTC Perpetual and for the sake of our own sanity, we're just going to always make sure to set the correct trade amount. Let's go ahead and create a new script and we're just going to name this a VE overview. Let's do the same here. And then we hit new. Once a script is created, we'll be presented with a blank canvas to start creating a new visual editor based bot indicator, so on and so forth. So the first thing we want to do is we need to add a command. And specifically for this overview, we're going to use the place by order command. But to do that, we first have to find it. So we can go under here and click commands and you'll see that we have a bunch of categories show up. Now we can go ahead and click every single one of these categories and look for it, or we can search for it here up in the command list or in the search command. Now it's also important to note that there's an additional filter at the bottom here under command set. If we click that, you'll see that it has all commands, trade bot set, indicator set. And these are just additional filters if we didn't want to use the search. So if we click trade bot set, you'll see that now we have categories specific towards trade bots. So let's go ahead and set this to all commands and let's search for a place by order. We found it and all we have to do is click it and then we'll have this new place by order block show up. If you're familiar with other visual editors, you'll notice that this looks fairly familiar. But if you're not, don't worry, we'll just run do a quick overview of this. At the top, you'll see a, a kind of a header to the block itself. This is what we'll call a block. And the header tells you exactly what command it is. On the left hand side, you'll see a bunch of different inputs. Each one of these circles or little um, input fields are separate inputs for this specific block. And then on the right hand side, you'll see outputs if there is any. Now specifically in Haas, we have this little I here on this little I here. If you hover over it, it's an information box and it'll tell you everything you need to know. It'll tell you what the block is, what it does, the different parameters it, parameters it takes, as well as if there's any other additional things you need to know. Like if this is a time input, is it based in seconds or milliseconds, so on and so forth. And then it also has a return. It might not look obvious now, but each one of the input fields, the little circles on the left here under parameters, do the colors do signify what type they take. So for example, purple would be a string input. Olive would be a constant, which are just different named integer values. Orange would be a bowling, which is true or false. Blue would be a single number. Cyan would be a single number or a list of numbers. And there's various blocks that can handle one or multiple inputs. Dynamic is the final one, which is yellow. And basically that means you can connect anything to it, but that does not necessarily mean it will work correctly. It re it's really up to the code of the individual blocks and you will be able to read what type of values a dynamic field will take inside this information field. Now, before we continue, there's a little bit more information I wanna share regarding the initial block itself. So if you look on the left here, you'll notice that some of them are highlighted. And by that, I mean some of the input parameters are highlighted, like execute price and amount, and some of them are not. This is to show you which ones are required. So in this case, exec, um, price and amount are, and which ones aren't. Now I know execute, um, execute is highlighted, but all blocks have this. And basically what this lets you do is this lets you enable and disable blocks based on other conditions. Now that we know which fields are required, we can actually have to now fill those. And there's two ways we can do this. We can look up the specific commands that are supported by each of the fields in the menu on the left, or we can go ahead and just right click and then a context window will pop up that gives us a bunch of different um, options as well as suggestions. So in this case, we have ask prices, bid prices, so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and use close prices. So once we click that, you'll notice that it immediately gets connected and we have a new block called close prices. So now that we've done that, we also need an amount. So let's go ahead and right click amount. And here we can use two different um, options. We can use input, which we can type in a number, or we can use trade amount. And this block basically gets the trade amount set in the settings. And let's go ahead and use that. Now that we have the trade amount block added, let's go ahead and add a type for this order. 
Now if we right click type, you'll notice we have the options for a limit order or market order. Let's create a limit order for now and then I'm going to show you a trick we can use to change this type. So once we have the limit order added, if we right click here and click change to, we can actually change this block to another block of a similar type. So for example, if we wanted this to actually be a market order now, we could simply click market order and it'll immediately change the block type. Let's go ahead and set that back. Now that we've changed it back, there's a few other parameters you might have noticed when you right click inside a block. So if we right click inside of the place by order, you'll see that we have not only change to, but things like reverse parameters, mirror in and outputs, toggle unused parameters, toggle connector, which is the execute block I mentioned that is enabled by default on the place by order, but every other block you can also use that to enable and disable. And then of course a straight disable command and some utility functions here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and click toggle unused parameters and you'll notice that everything that we're not using immediately disappears. And this helps for kind of organization and cleaning up scripts when you're trying to show other people. So let's go ahead and toggle that back. Toggle unused parameters back. Now the last thing I want to show you regarding the specific um, blocks themselves is if you notice timeout takes a number. However, if we right click the dot, we can click change to field and then we can just enter a number. So for example, 60, and that'll give us a one minute timeout on a limit order. And of course we can just delete it and change it back here if we want it to go back to a normal dot. And this can happen for a lot of different fields, specifically around numbers and list of numbers. So if you, as well as strings. So if you want to enter it manually rather than actually have to connect another block, you're definitely able to do that. Now before I leave you, there's one more really cool feature I want to show you. If we have a small setup like this and we don't want to spend the time, let's say you have shaky hands, connecting every single one of these lines to the correct inputs, or you know, you've placed all the bricks down and you didn't use it through the right click menu, what you can do is you can right click here and hit auto connect command. And when you click that, the software will do its best to connect the current unconnected blocks to each other based on their input output types. Now, this is hit or miss like most things would be that are trying to figure out what you want. So really, I, I would only recommend using this on smaller examples such as this, because once you get super complex, things might get a little weird. But anyways, I hope that gives you a quick example of an overview of the visual editor and how it works. As always, if you have any questions, leave a comment below, or you can jump on Discord where one of us can help you out. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe if you want to get notified when the next one gets updated. And as always, until next time.